What's up you guys, my name is Bradley, alright, and before we get started, as always, this video is sponsored by Prime Energy Drinks, alright, the, the best energy drink on the market, no sugar, alright, you're supporting and giving money to Logan Paul, good sh Anyways, you guys, so today we're gonna, you know, talk about, first thing on the agenda is, I feel like uh, women are finally starting to want to erase men and eradicate men from society, and we need to talk about how we need to combat this and how to go against it, so I've devised a bit of a pl Are they gone? You know what, actually, to think about it, now, now that I think about it, I think that uh, Mr. I'll just call him R.R., uh, would probably stick around to see what the secret is. Uh, maybe this video isn't the most effective. Listen, okay? This is the last one, I think. Yeah. This is the last one for uh, Cringe the Album, all right? And after this, we're done with these videos. So there's no more boy, boy who cried wolf situation. Next time I make a video called Sorry, I'm actually going to be apologizing. <sighs> It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, okay? Because I'm only human. Let me click the button. There we go. I'm only human after all. Except in this case, I'm only man, okay? So you definitely shouldn't put the blame on me. But in reality, though, um, make sure you help your partner out today around the house. And make sure she feels uh, cared for more than just financially. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Bradley. I have a bread taste in music, and today we are continuing the saga of uh, the absolutely awful dog <laughs> discography of Falling in Reverse. We have already listened to two, actually, yeah, two full albums as well as the newest single, Falling in Reverse, fronted by Ronnie Radke, was formed after he was kicked out of his other band. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Escape the Fate. That's what it was. Yeah, Escape the Fate. He made this album, but first he made the Ronnie Radke mixtape, which was terrible. Uh, yeah, Fashionably Late was absolute ass. However, there's been a bit of an unfolding of events uh, since then, uh, with me personally, with Ronnie Radke. Um, it seemed, so I, I asked him a question on Twitter about, I was like, I'm going to react to this album. I'm going to continue the series. What do you want the people to know about Just Like You, the third Falling in Reverse album? And Ronnie Radke responded and he said, this album sold very well. This album made him a lot of money, which I'm going to be honest, not too surprised. Look at this cover. I would have no idea this is a Falling in Reverse album. It just looks like some... Uh, Porn garbage. So very much uh, early clickbait. Actually, no, it's 2015. This shit ain't early clickbait. This this modern day clickbait. Base response. It is what it is. <laughs> so yeah, that's what he wants you guys to understand is that this is a very highly uh, sold album. Even though there's no more like personal beef between me and Ronnie, it's, I still don't really respect him. This was all filmed a while ago, so I have even less respect for Ronnie now. Um, believe it or not. Uh, you know, but hey, if you're down to call sometime, you know what I'm saying? We could, uh, we could rustle it out, you know? Because I know, I know you care about my opinion. I know you're watching this video right now, so. Queens of the Stone Age cover? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, with this? Is that what you mean? Oh, you're talking about this? Something like that, yeah. Except this one looks like it's a model from Hot Topic. With that being said, first song, Chemical Prisoner. Oh, God. I can't say I expect you to enjoy this, but I think it's a big step up from Fashionably Late, and this album that comes after this is typically regarded as decent even by people who hate this band. I'll say one thing, the writing on this is definitely a step up from uh, from the previous album of Fashionably Late. I don't really know how much uh, that's worth, but it is worth mentioning that it definitely seems like he's taking it more seriously. This 
song you like a bit? Yes, there is. There's actually a lot of Falling in Reverse songs that I think that there are little segments that I enjoy from it. Even the new stuff. There was the song Zombified, which I thought the energy of that uh, worked pretty well. And if it wasn't a song about cancellation, I thought it would have actually came together really nicely. And it's unfortunate to see that Watch the World Burn was kind of moving in the opposite direction of what I was hoping for. You can tell I was starstruck by Ronnie Radke uh, messaging me with how I'm very lenient and uh, nice towards this music when in reality it still sounds absolutely obnoxious as all hell. The wolf inside. Well, I'll say one thing that... uh. Already, this is not as entertaining to react to, uh, mostly because it's a, it's more inoffensive, I guess, which, I mean, he's taking it more seriously. I'm taking it more seriously on this, but I don't know. I still don't love it. Ugh. Oh, God. Oh, God. This. Oh, oh, my ears. No, not this. Bro. Okay. Again, this album came out 2015, okay, 2015. Whatever the fuck this is, whatever the sound of this shit is, no. Oh, that drop ain't good. Chemical Prisoner is exactly what I was hoping that uh, this band wouldn't do, which is basically it seems like they've sanitized their sound. I mean, I can't say just immediately, but it sounds like they're taking the most boring approach possible. I don't like the production on this all that much. I think the final product isn't, like, all that great. So the fact that it just sounds like any other band doing this shit, but a little bit late to the party, is honestly really bad. I I'm actually more offended by this just for the fact that it's so boring and inoffensive. Red headphones. Dog. No, it is. It's so mid, but it's like... It's it's not even doing it well. It's it just sounds like a a C rate like version of some shit I've already heard before. He was busy collecting coins. God, if you are above, here we go. God cannot save my soul. It's straight to hell for me, I know. At least with this, it's like bad but entertainingly bad because it's so like melodramatic and ridiculous, you know? Ooh. Oh God! You deserve this for for listening to this album. Get yourself a coffee. Thank you, Austin. Not enough coffee. So dynamic. Biggest sin here is it's painfully boring. Once again, I actually am buying into the lyrics a bit more. It seems like he's becoming a better songwriter, but I'm just still bored out of my mind. Wait, there's four writers on this song. That might actually explain why things just aren't seeming as interesting. Hold on a second. Written by Ronnie Radke for the last album, right? Clicking on the songs. Written by Ronnie Radke. Written by... Written by Ronnie Radke. Okay. And then we go to this album. Chemical Prisoner. Written by... Michael Elvis Basquette. Charlie Massabo, Ronnie Radke, and Jackie Vincent. Okay. I see. I see. Something's a little wrong here. Yeah, it seems like Ronnie Radke's no longer the only one writing these songs. That would explain a lot, actually. I know, I'm disappointed. That might explain why things feel so sanitized. Okay, so in other words, that's probably why Ronnie's only comment on this is it sold well, is because this is a total sellout album. Uh, and an uninteresting, I guess, uh, pimple in a career. That'll explain not only why it's extremely mediocre, but why Mart hated it. Oh yeah, that was the other album I was thinking of with this exact cover. You're right. Basically, yeah, it's the same shit, different toilet. God, if you are above is just so painfully boring and mediocre. I mean, it's a low shrug to a strong red headphones. I, oh. I don't like this new direction they're going in. It's nothing to really talk about because it feels just very sanitized. Next song, Sexy Drug. Oh, my ears. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh god, oh Christ, oh god, oh no. Oh, 
Oh, sweet mother of God. I'm not all right. I'm not okay. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, God. It's back to the start. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's so bad. I'm frustrated and it's sexually. Is he? Is that? Oh my god. This is terrible. This sounds like a leftover from the last album. Oh my god. Not the electronics on top of it. Oh god. Oh man, this is bad. Oh wow, and this is the most popular song on this album, which I feel like speaks uh, volumes about what appeals through uh, through this band. Same thing that appeals uh, to me as a hate watcher, and that's the fact that this shit sucks. It sounds horrible. It sounds like it's trying to relate to the youth with OMG. You make me come, <coughs> please. Oh, no. Dog. <sighs> oh, man. This is infinitely better than Owl City. Uh, I wouldn't say infinitely better. Next song, Just Like You. Oh my god. But honestly, I'm just like you. Oh wow. You don't want to be too close to me. Really don't care about all of that. Man, you know what sucks about reacting to this album is I have nothing left to say. No, I got nothing left to say about falling in reverse at this point. I mean, you hear this shit. This ain't good. It wasn't good for 2015. This shit's terrible now. It's aged, like, exponentially. The singing is annoying. But it's also just not interesting in comparison to the other album. This just feels like making it more commercial. Refining the sound to what people like the most and just pumping out more of it. Almost like a, uh, a genetic algorithm. How is this inoffensive? It's sonically and uh, lyrically super offensive. Because I'm numb to it. Just like you. you. Ja -na -na -na. How numb are you to bad music? Uh, if I hear enough of something that's bad, I start comparing it and becoming a critic of it. That's how numb I am. Um, but it also makes it so that when I hear something that all of a sudden breaks that numbness, it, it really shocks me because I'm like, wow, this is so bad that even I am like deeply offended by it. I'm just a boy who's angry at his mom, and I hope, in fact, she breaks her back the moment I step on this crack. Wow. He's 32 when you wrote that? So he's saying that I'm an asshole, but he's just like you, saying that you might call him an asshole, but you should look at yourself in the mirror in a way, and then he goes on to talk about his mother, who he has a lot of issues with, and I'm aware that I'm an asshole, living my life the way I want to, and you can't deny that, honestly, I'm just like you, and I'm like... Man, this song is so boring. I just, I'm, I'm falling asleep at the wheel here. It's the red headphones. Dog. At least his rap album was like, so on the nose that you couldn't look away from it, you know? Oh my God, guillotine the final chapter. This shit starts off with a kick. Let's see where it goes. I also think the mix of this album is just really bad. Like it just sounds like it's made for a radio. Okay. Yo, that goes hard. Wow, the screaming's gotten a lot better. Oh no. Man, it didn't sound like falling in reverse for a bit, so I was pretty excited. I gotta say though, it's definitely a step up from the last one. <sighs> we have slept not at home. Oh. The car's on fire. That music that makes you want to lose your way again? What's up, CDTV? Motherfucking move! 
Call of Duty type trailer. Guillotine 4 is the best song up to this point that I've heard in Falling in Reverse's catalog as I think that it's got the heavy instrumentation, strong solid understanding of what makes metalcore work, uh, and some of Ronnie's most convincing vocals to where he actually seems like he's taking the craft very seriously. It's a shrug. Not bad. Genuinely, uh, like, unironically enjoyable. Not bad. Actually. Next song, Stay Away. That is good. This is basically like a copy and paste version of like all these other songs. Man, I'm so bored of this album. Shit is not what I expected. This is just super underwhelming. Like, I feel like their previous project, they were like trying out so much interesting shit. Even though it failed every single time, I was excited to see what the next song had to offer. Here, I have no interest in continuing. This is a deep, I gotta buy it. Chat, stop bullying Lego shit. Look at these numbers. Look at this. Believe it or not, the people who are against this are in the minority. Most people who listen to this enjoy it. Lego shit just has the balls to admit it. I'm just saying, like, I, I promise you there are other people in this chat who are hate watching me who enjoy this music. All right? Lego shit is not the, uh, not the problem, if that makes sense. What is Hotel Ugly? Excuse me? I lost my way again Through the storm Through the wind Guys, he's, Oh my god, he said the line Yo, he said the line He said the thing He said the line, he said it Why is he listening to this cringe felon Who used, who used to have his cheeks clapped by Tyrone? <laughs> I was wondering what you referred to there. I was like, "What? what is that a reference to? I, I eventually got it. I was like, oh, that's that's so awful. That's such a terrible way to put it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's the screamed I lost my way again from? One day someone just sent me this, uh, this audio uh, or a video of this guy covering the song. <laughs> And it had six views, and then when I did, I was like, this is funny. I made a community post. I think I had a picture of Machine Gun Kelly, and I said channel update. Like, huge channel update, right? But then the link, uh, you would think it would take you to a video that was, like, about um, my channel. But no, it just took you to this. <laughs> And uh, now that video has 30,000 views. <laughs> Instead of six. Stay Away is... The only thing that's notable or interesting about this is the fact that he screams I lost my way again. Which is just funny because of the other song. Um, besides that, it's pretty boring. Again, not really loving this album. Red headphones. Dog Surprisingly <laughs> underwhelming. Next song, Wait and See. Yeah. Wait, what? Fall off boy. I'm glad everyone else caught on to that, that it just sounded like a total Fallout Boy ripoff. What the fuck is this? Calling all cards, it's an emergency. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, fiction, it's telling lies to our vision. It's like a prison that we live in and we're all in the Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so this is what he was talking about when he says that he's, uh, he's happy for people are, yeah, yeah, that, like, people like Tom McDonald are, are doing wonders in the YouTube music scene and how he was originally the one to, uh, first start doing it. You know, I hear this and I can actually believe that. He's losing it again? You're right, there never is high end to this audio. It's because everything is all compressed. Here's the thing about high end is high end is usually the quietest thing in the mix because uh, high end frequencies cut through. So if I was to play like, um, and I've done this before, I've had videos where I would have like a tiny little bit of like super high pitched audio 
uh, and I would fade it up to make it sound like I was going insane, you know, as like some sort of like, uh oh, the brain's ringing some craziness. And I had to usually turn it down to just an unfathomably quiet level so that it wasn't actually like uh, a, a power drill to the ears. The problem with compression is it makes everything same volume and it cuts out a lot of high frequencies. And honestly, in my opinion, I think it just ruins the dynamics of songs a lot of the time. Oh, the mixing! Falling in Reverse is sort of in the so bad it's good category. They're super entertaining. I've said this before, but I would be very sad if... Uh, well, first of all, this album is an example of that. But Ronnie Radke stopped being himself and made very boring, forgettable music. Uh, yeah, we, we'd lose one of the most entertainingly bad artists of all time. I gotta say, the pitch shifting of the scream sounds absolutely terrible. Oh. Wait, there's a song on here called Brother? Okay, I mean, sounds like a Tom McDonald song. Dog. Just with a bit more talent <laughs> from just band members in general, who I think make it so that this song is better than a Tom McDonald song, but not by much. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Next song, The Bitter End. Oh god. I'm not gonna lie, I actually like this song. I like it. I, I am not afraid to admit it. This is uh, neurodivergent hell. But like, I gotta say. Maybe it's that I've been beaten down by this sound so much. Animura, I'm so glad you you said that. I'm having fun with it. It's bad. But also at the same time, it's fun. And then something just snapped. Something inside of me. You let your love for Ronnie blind you? Oh my god. I get it. <laughs> Is that the Danny DeVito clip? <laughs> Ronnie's screaming improved quite a bit on this album. That's what I'm saying. Is uh, I actually feel like he's blending into a lot of other very genetic, uh, genetic, generic, and forgettable metalcore of the era. And as a result, I feel like it's so easy to just forget about Ronnie Radke and just listen to the music. And it's actually okay. There's very little I I feel like about this song that I can really, uh, without saying like directly like. If you don't hate the sound of this song, you know, there's very little to get mad about. It's a shrug for me. I think it's alright. Actually, I think it's more than alright. I think it's pretty pretty enjoyable thoroughly. It might be boring, it might not really strike much of a chord, but actually works pretty well in the background. Falling in Reverse broke the cycle? Well, let's see. I mean, it was right before an absolutely awful Tom McDonald type song, so... Let's see where it goes. My heart's to blame. Oh god! No, oh no. Oh god, no, dude. Oh god. Drop the red headphones and move on. Is this song worth listening to? Am I gonna get anything out of this that's like of any entertainment? I mean, I think the mixing of this is terrible. I think that the synths are absolutely awful. I'd be happy to just move on. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? No, this is awful. It's boring. All right. Red headphones. Dog. Yeah, I feel like I'm listening to a repeat of a song before where it's just all the appeal is just grand, you know, music that stands out in no way. I mean, you get the gist of it, but why skip? I feel like that just feels like a half-assed reaction critique. Do you see me, Legoshi? Do you see how I look? Do you see... Mercy is the reason. It's ex it's an exchange. It's an exchange of credibility for sanity. I think that that's worthy. And that's why I'm going to skip. Yo, the song is called Get Me Out. That's very fitting. Another year and I just want to disappear again. Again.
Oh my god. Again, this guy's like 33. What the fuck is he talking about? School is in another year. I just can't win, and sometimes I just wish it would all... I mean, to be fair, you know, it stopped happening recently, but for the longest time I was having dreams that I was back in school. Like, I would just wake up and I was like still 22 years old and in high school and I was like just just there so that I could be around other people because I because like I I work in a room and and I went from like being around people all the time to just like not being around people all the time so I'd be getting like an education still it was fucking weird and... oh, and... what oh oh it's a school shooter anthem again god damn it damn. Oh no. Oh fuck off. Oh my god, it's a I gotta leave this town anthem. Oh my god. Motherfucking moo! <laughs> Get Me Out is the most cliche song on this entire album. Oh man, I'm so bored of this shit. Dog. <sighs> get me out is indeed get me out of here. Die for you. Here we go. Yeah. Oh god. Primus couldn't have made Bad Girls Club. Falling in reverse could have made Tommy the Cat. You know what's so interesting? This uh, this album works very cohesively from front to back, and I completely understand why it sold well. And even though I don't like it, I actually understand the appeal of this way more than I did with the uh, with the previous project. And I understand Legoshi enjoying this. In fact, I'm surprised that people are so shocked by Legoshi's enjoyment. Um, it actually makes total sense to me. <laughs> Watch the world burn. Yo, it's over. Yo. Anyways, Die For You is fine. I think that it's just very, eh. Low shrug. Final song here is called Brother, which, you know. These final songs are a bonus. Oh my god, here we go. Girl, I wanna buy these shoes for my mama, please. It's Christmas Eve and these shoes are just. Could you hurry, sir? Mama says there's not much time. Hey, I appreciate the message of the song. You know, it seems very passionate. I just think the song sounds like dog shit, man. I think it sounds like ass. I don't think you got the best voice for this kind of thing, but you know what? I appreciate the sentiment. I really do, and I respect making a song like this. Uh, the song sounds like shit, straight up. It just sounds, it just sounds terrible. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's that, uh, that's that third Falling in a Verse album. Holy shit, I can't believe it's over. Oh, from an objective standpoint, in the discography of Falling in a Verse, something's not as bad. I don't think it's as bad. I really don't. I don't think it's good at all. I think it's actually agonizingly cliche. But there are a few moments where it actually cuts through, and I think that the intensity works. I also think that there's a solid flow throughout this project. Uh, the last project didn't have that. This has that. So there are definitely some things uh, that improve, and I think this is the best uh, Falling in Reverse album so far. I'd give it a 3 minus to a solid 3. Brad, are you aware that you've created a very niche subculture of I've lost my way again in Lucas Graham memes? Uh... No, I've not. I'd, I'd love to see some examples of what you're talking about. Okay. Peace out, you guys. See, I knew something was up when Ronnie Radke sent me a message on Twitter. I knew something was going on, especially considering it was over literally a tweet that I made about TikTok being a toxic platform. You are the dumbest person ever. That's, there you go. You are the dumbest person ever. Um, yeah, so the rest of the message isn't much better. In fact, it actually gets significantly worse. I knew something was up with this guy, you know, so it makes sense that he released a new song 
Uh, the reception of this song is that it's absolute dog shit as usual for Falling in Reverse, especially in this new era of uh, basically Falling in Reverse taking inspiration from people like Tom McDonald and deciding that they need to do some uh, horrific shilling in their music. If you think that's a stretch, it's not. Uh, Ronnie Radke is indeed good friends with Mr. Tom McDonald, so I have a feeling that this wonderful song is going to be a good part of that. Now, of course, he says that he's a big fan of YouTube reactions, uh, especially, so that's why, I mean, I guess that's why I'm here, but it's only really when uh, it's people sucking his dick uh, that he really cares, you know? Uh, I remember him retweeting, it was like some guy reacting to him going, hibbity skibbity hibbity hibbity and the guy was like, what the fuck is going on? And it was like the most cringe shit I've ever seen. But now you got a real human being here who isn't just here to make money or to feed into the disgusting industry, uh, who actually is curious as to whether or not this is a quality song. And let me tell you right now, considering that <laughs> his attitude seems like it's dog shit, I have a question that's going to be bleeding horribly into his new single here, Last Resort. Uh, Reimagined. I don't know if this is like an old song or if it's a cover of uh, Papa Roach. Either way, here we go. In life, there's people that hustle, there's people that grind, and there's we the best music. No, no, oh, it is. Oh, man, you're doing a cover of Last Resort? Please don't tell me this is on the album. Good morning. I'm Wilfred Brimley, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about diabetes. Actually, about diabetes and how it's affected me in my life. Don't give a fuck if I cut my arm. Yeah, this sounds like something that uh, Prince Charming would perform in uh, Shrek the Third, you know, on stage. So that's what I feel like I'm listening to right now, but it's unironic. Uh, yeah, this is this is horrible. It's taking a song that's already super overdramatic and petty and turning it into something that's significantly more melodramatic and petty uh, by just taking the only thing about that song that was fun and removing it. But it's reimagined. Okay, it's reimagined, you know, this uh, cover of Papa Roach. Jesus Christ, and it's five minutes long. All right, I'm going to grab some munchkins. We're going to be here a while. You see how it says 50 munchkins on this box? Well, I got this from the uh, Duncan that has one star that always screws up everything. And I got to say, this is a new low. Wow, nice auto-tune, bro. Wow. This is the part in the reaction where people start coming. Yeah, I feel like this song would serve well to have a overdramatization thing at the bottom, like those, uh, you know, diabetes commercials or something. Can't say he didn't put his all into it, especially at the end there. Thought the buildup of orchestration was actually a really nice touch. Of course, everything's very predictable in this song. Again, it's following that formula so that the reaction channels are like, whoa, at the right times, you know, to sell the most. I don't know. I don't know what the point is to go after the reaction channels, but I guess it works, you know, for people like Tom McDonald. Here's the thing. This thing is stupid in concept. It really is. So it's like pouring a lot of emotion into a mold that is a, a, essentially a joke. It's really hard to get much out of this. Um, but of course, you know, hey, Ronnie Radke, the marketing genius, I expect this thing to do extremely well. I already see like tons of reaction videos of like, here, I'll just show you. Oh my god, yes. Oh, I'm fucking coming. Oh, it's so great. Yo, look at that. It's so, yo. Well, I'm happy to report as someone who actually likes listening to music that isn't like, hmm, designed for chugging beer. This sucks ass. No amount of m emotional release is going to make up for the fact you got no taste. Be on the red headphones. Dogs. Nope.